Hi folks, Jonathan Wilson. Just a spin on this, uh, well this is a hybrid acoustic, the first ever. Um, actually, I'm hybrid meaning that it's made out of uh, some different materials. Um, and this has a, uh, this particular one has a veneer on it, which is, um, it's kind of hard to see it on the camera and I'll show some better shots in a little while. But, um, you can see it's, uh, basically has, uh, you know, a very nice, uh, flame, you know, like a kind of a quilted cedar on it, on all surfaces. Um, like all of the other instruments, it has the, uh, vial glide and the nice little Stouffer Vintner, uh, thing going on here. Anyway, just a little uh, postcard from the shop here. I'm going to kind of move this here just a little bit. So, what do we have going on today? Well, I'm going to uh, mute my thing here. By the way, I wanted to point out that this tail here is that's carbon fiber you can see it's not really painted over and I kind of did a little uh, you know just an experiment with it but I just kind of kept that showing this here too you can see I left that there visible just because you know it's kind of a fun little conversation piece anyway I'm really uh, bonding with this thing and anxious to get the other ones going and built a lot of you people are waiting on some things Anyway, this is just sort of a postcard, um, December 10th, I think, somewhere in that ballpark. And anyway, yeah, 2020, right? <laughs> it's been uh, kind of crazy, to say the least. So I hope all of you were well. I have my other prototype here that's now a little over, about two years old-ish. I'm going to show you what the effects are and I've kind of left it unprotected in this particular climate just so we can make a case for this. So this uh, you can see has got some cracks going on okay but that's because we have extreme dry. Right now our hygrometer says we are at 24 percent not good. Guitars start to crack or violins and fragile wooden instruments can start cracking in the 30s. So we want the humidity to be about 45, 47. And that's just not gonna happen. I mean, it's kind of like telling people to floss their teeth. Do people really floss every day like the dentist says? You know what I mean? So if you're not humidifying your, uh, and I'm talking about very high-end solid wood instruments, ones that are not made of laminates particularly, and laminates are very strong. And so I've decided to take the laminate thing to another extreme, and I'm also working on just getting, you know, the sound and the different combinations uh, down to a, an art, you know. So this is like the next uh, plateau of, of Luthery here. This particular one is, uh, I do keep a, um, this one has a wooden neck, so it is a genuine hybrid. I've got little markings here as to where I'd like to carve a little more, you know, I wanna just revisit a few things. Um, but anyway, uh, I, you can tell I really like this thing, huh? Um, so uh, what we do have going on, quick shout out to Elon Musk, uh, who's moved his factory to Tesla along with, um, I'm gonna say Nestle and HP. Wow, okay. Well, uh, Elon, let's, uh, congratulations. Let's talk about that uh, Einstein violin moment laboratory. Uh, down there. Anyway, we'll talk now. So, uh, let's see. We have a lot of things uh, to, to cover other than that. Um, right now, uh, I wanted to draw your attention to this. This project I mentioned on another video, and it, yeah, it's sort of a sidebar. So, in other words, it's not like we're um, putting this, building these just because we love what we're building and uh, this one is going to be a six string tune like an uh, you know arpeggioni guitar vial which these are the instruments I'm known for so you kind of if you know and followed this that these are you know tuned E to E typically some are tuned B to B like the Game of Thrones one for example um, which by the way yeah <laughs> anyway um, 
this one has you know six strings now we're making a five string tune like a cello with a high e so this is going to be called the duet or at least i'm going by the operating title of that the concept of which these two instruments would have a meeting and basically there would be uh, musical compositions playing off the strengths of them uh, for you music geeks out there what i'm going to talk about is this um, guitars are tuned in fourths which are great for chords and polyphony um, you have to work a little extra hard to play fast scales on a guitar. With this tuning, you can really rip uh, fast scales and, and note passages, so that's the real strength in, in the melodic sense. Uh, double stops are, and triple stops are a little harder um, on those instruments, but they're really strong in that other area. Whereas this one, you can do arpeggios on, like I you know, demoed a little earlier. And I believe that's kind of why the arpeggioni was called the arpeggioni, because you could do arpeggios on it really well. But I'm just going to hold this here for a second. You can see that I'm just strumming a little garden variety E minor chord there. And I can't bow it from this angle here. But you can see that we can really do arpeggios. Right? So we can, um, when I sit down, I'm actually a lot better, trust me. But anyway, um, so that would be the meeting of those two particular kind of instruments. And um, so that's, that's the duet we're building. Um, as far as our general production goes, um, I've had to put a slow track on a lot of the electrics. I'm getting the last batch out, I'm trying to get it out by the end of the year. It's, uh, it is what it is. I might have a couple bleeding into the next uh, mainly because of the juggle of basically everything you know 2020 itself has been um, other than the emotional <laughs> component of you know all this stuff going on um, the administration has been you know I've had to chase supplies and spent a lot of time in the office just chasing you know things from different vendors different factories or in different schedule rhythms soft open, hard close, you know, th those kind of things. So it's uh, been a little crazy with that. Um, also just, uh, you know, we're, it is 2020. So <laughs> what can I say? Save California, right? But again, shout out to Elon. Okay, so, um, we've talked about the dry instruments which is being an inspiration for building instruments that can pretty much take it and that's the direction I've been really trying to take I've had sort of a somehow Jesse uh, shout out to Jesse he actually worked on the uh, Toga Man logo with me and it's here somewhere I think it's on one of these bags that I keep in my staging area but there's, uh, there's a little, you know, Kaizen Japanese figures there. And we try to stay on this trajectory of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement and change. So we have always been like trying to push this thing forward to the hilt um, and beyond. Because, you know, this is something I've spent the last 30 years doing and I really want to at least have a peak era here and, you know, really make these things happen. It's not enough to have had these things in soundtracks for 20 years, you know, and, and have lots of movies and TV and film with which I'm so tickled to and I'm still overwhelmed, still wrapping my head around that. But anyway, I still want to bring the instrument to its uh, really highest point. We've been doing these, uh, this is a Spartan that's getting uh, finished for John uh, McFarlane over in, um, I'm setting it up and we're going to Crate. Um, but anyway, yeah, it goes through a lot of QC at the end, so I'm the one having to really, you know, make sure every little thing is just so. And especially with the fingerboards and, you know, getting them polished out, you know, to, to a liking and always trying to bring that to another level. So anyway, but this has been a very successful model and we're just trying to make the next generation of these instruments now couple things. This particular example has um, basically a wood veneer over it and we can do tons of different things with it um, and just I still have to play with the sound a little bit you know sometimes but it's I'm already I have old strings on here because I pirated them from the one that's up on the uh, wall getting a repair over there uh, which is the shop model and that's the one I've been like saying you know here's what happens when we let the humidity go. So anyway, um, 
We can also have carbon fiber itself, and I, it's kind of hard to see there, but there's that's carbon fiber. So we can have carbon fiber as the outer layer, as the look, and it can um, adjust the damping from the inside in some technical ways. Um, the neck, I'm actually work. You know, I have I have the tooling to make a fully composite neck. Um, I'm I'm just working at. I really want it to be ready for prime time, like anything else. So. Um, but this is the way forward for us logistically. Uh, typically when we're building these things, we're going through layers of, you know, acquiring a lot of wood, having it re having it milled. And in California terms, especially in the year 2020, that's just not a good way to do it. And, and other than that, I take up a much bigger footprint in the shop that I would only use the machines of which for, you know, once in a year. So we're really, uh, trying to make uh, make the most uh, forward thinking ways. Now, in other technical geek out terms, what uh, we'll uh, also be getting into probably as well is not just carbon fiber, um, but you know, composite technology on instruments actually goes back centuries. Um, even like making armor, for example, hide glue and flax, you know, something that arrows can't pierce, but it's very strong. And you could take organic materials and you could give them the same vacuum treatment or whatever, uh, however you make it. Um, and so we'll be exploring some of that. And then some of those things uh, such as flax and hemp, um, either as dampening layers or structural. And that's the fun of this whole thing. I totally geek out. I love all, you know, the various, it's like, you know, orienting stays on a sailboat mast kind of things. and and. Um, which, by the way, that I have a little family heritage with that. My uncle was a famous sailmaker in uh, Rhode Island back about 100 years ago. But uh, he did those J-boats, those huge sloops. Uh, he made the sails. He was the first to uh, go away from cotton and debt, you know. Um, I guess he went to some sort of ray rayon or something like that, but he was the first composite sailmaker. And he also uh, was on the uh, committee that designed the rig on the... Uh, famous star class sailboat. So that was just a little glimpse into some of my heritage there for a second. But anyway, that stuff I really like. See, I'm a salty sailor here. So um, I like to bring a lot of that stuff together, all the architectural uh, boat building, all the stuff. And there's a disconnect between all of that in some ways. So instrument builders, we're really having to be tuned into the you know, nuances of how the instruments go together, how they resonate, and what we dampen on purpose and what we don't, you know, to uh, make things really good. And that even that even is true, by the way, with uh, violins and uh, guitars. Uh, the lute builders, uh, they're all kind of going for this thing, and they know, you know, through trial and error and some tradition, uh, we can kind of, you know, find a jumping off point and, and, and find that take that journey. Anyway, um, so basically the way forward in 2021 is, uh, you know, going into this, these kind of uh, different materials and approaches, high tech, um, or at least, uh, you know, fairly advanced forms of it. <laughs> um, or at least as far as I, you know, this crazy mind can do. Oh, I thought this would be kind of fun. Uh, this is uh, one that I'm actually finishing the setup on for uh, Michael Lynn. He's out here. Um, again, this light is not the best. I'll have to put up some better ones. But this is a uh, this is a Johan G model. And I don't think I'm going to be building many more of these Johan Gs anytime soon. Uh, just because, here's what it is. Um, we're a very small, tiny firm, and we, you know, and things that take up more bandwidth and hold up a fleet of 30 instruments ahead of it, uh, not cute. So anytime I can get kind of rabbit holeish on, you know, um, an individual instrument, and that generally always happens. You know, you go down that little thing of, you know, making sure everything's just so. But I mean, when you get at the end of the art department, it can kind of tie it up there. So I, the cool thing is, though. This is something I'm excited about. We could actually take a variety of different, you know, outside shells. And it could doesn't have to be wood. We can go to some, like, printed graphic or something like that. I mean, stuff is just possible. And that's exactly what we're doing. So, 
first goal is to get the initial 10x guys uh, you know fulfilled um, this journey goes back um, I, I, I'm gonna say it has origins before uh, 2015 but late 2015 ish 2016 ish is when I engaged in something called the 10 10x project that is another whole story in and of itself but the short end is it's just been one crazy thing after the other of events that just you know you don't see them in a crystal ball when you start a journey and you think I'm gonna get from here to here in 18 months and then it just turns out it's like five years or something so anyway I thank all of everybody who's been hanging on that but we're making some stuff happen here um, I had initially made a unimold which I still have and that's the uh, that's I'm gonna revisit that when the timing's better. I've been finding though, as far as really working stuff out, it's, uh, well, had to solve two problems at once. One was that we're basically dealing with needing this go-to model to be as repeatable and reliable going forward. And so just the whole sourcing and the complexity of that, um, Really, it made more sense to make an actual copy of it in in that different material, and let the other you know mold you know once I can really get it under the hood on a few of these, go back to that and you know hit it. Uh, time frame, I'm a I'm afraid to answer that. Now this is like I said, the Twilight Zone meets you know PSYOP 2020. But the last you know five years, you know, we had just fun stuff over in Fillmore, California, the packing house, the local bureaucracy. Once again, that's what got me out there in the first place. So it's been like the last six years of just playing dodgeball with all this stuff. But anyway, so um, anyway, we're, we're here in Valencia. And it's a wonderful shop, wonderful space. Um, wish it'd be easier for all of you to come visit. Uh, right now, of course, we have to, you know, muzzle up and, and kind of do that thing. Um, but anyway, reach out and, uh, you know, uh, there's really some really cool stuff here as you can have it. I know it's a long video, but, uh, you know, sometimes I just got to take a little morning coffee and, uh, you know, actually crush something like this and, um, some upward spiral kind of stuff, if you will. So we're, uh, pushing ahead on these things, um, and, uh, we'll be, putting more stuff out as we go and I'm committing to doing more stuff like this so have an exceedingly awesome day evening week month and be inspired